Thank you, Chair, for, for inviting me to share my thoughts, my experience working in the field of renewable and energy efficient technologies in Africa. As a director of energy and climate change program for Junido, I have been involved almost over 10 years now working on resource efficient development pathways in many countries in Africa. And I thought this is a very good opportunity for me to share some of uh, innovative programs we are doing on the ground. Sometimes we feel that we all know what we want to do, but know how. How do we translate that action on the ground? And that becomes very important when we really look at from a UN agency like Junido perspective point of view. Just uh, one slide on what we are, who we are. We are a specialized agency of the United Nations with mandate to promote sustainable industrial development. We are focusing on three areas, poverty reduction through productive activities, trade capacity building, energy and environment. And coming now to energy and environment, which is directly related to the topic of this very important session, which is resource efficient development pathways. In UNIDO, we are promoting green industries. We are, we are trying to promote transition to clean and low carbon technologies, green economies, sustainable development, linking to green jobs, and also decoupling economic growth from increased natural resource consumption, energy intensity, and of course, negative environmental impacts. Uh, there are three areas under which we try to work in Africa and the rest of the world. First is greening of industries, where we try to promote efficient use of materials, water, and energy. Second, creation of new green industries to create new jobs. And there we are focusing also on re reduce, reuse, and recycle phase, and of course, providing enabling framework for policies, technologies, and capacity building. Since um, uh, Dr. Lijia mentioned about energy as one of the areas to focus on, I try to really look at Africa, and this slide I always share to all presentations. This is how Africa looks in the night. This is a, like a picture can tell a thousand words. It is basically when we talk about Africa, access to energy becomes very important. But yes, it should be coupled with energy efficiency and resource efficiency to really go forward on a development path which is sustainable not only for Africa, for the rest of the world also. Just to flag a few very important issues on energy poverty in Africa. As of now, only one out of four Africans have access to reliable source of energy, modern energy. Only 7% of hydroelectric potential has been harnessed. Our previous speaker, His Excellency, pointed out that in DRC itself, it's less than 3% they have harnessed their hydropower potential, which is very, very important and, of course, can be very sustainable. Over-dependence of traditional biomass resources, uh, Ligia pointed out in her presentation that this is where the solutions lie, the problem lies as well as solutions lie. And this is very interesting to note that sometimes when we look at biomass use, we, are look, we have to really look at it in a more integrated fashion. We had a very important regional meeting in Accra last October where it was pointed out that in Ghana, although we have more than 70% access to energy, still 80% of population is using traditional biomass and charcoal at household level. So there's a disconnect. Even if you have access to energy and electricity, but even at the domestic level, so it means when we try to look at energy policy planning, we must look at not only for the power generation, but also to look at the household at the domestic level. And of course, we really need substantial investments to move forward with sustainable energy systems. I have selected five areas where I would like to present some best practices we are doing in Africa. First is enhancing access to energy. Second, demonstration of innovative technologies. Third, promoting flagship programs. I do believe this time has come to scale up. Time has come to scale up those flagship programs for markets to work. Because unless markets will work in Africa, we, we do believe that resource efficient development pathways cannot be really harnessed, cannot be achieved. We really need also market transformations for clean energy technologies. And above all, carbon financing and public-private partnerships become very important. I hope many of you already know that less than 4% funds flow to Africa as a whole under CDM. Most of the funds flow to Asia and other countries, but Africa as a continent received less than 4%. Of course, carbon financing markets are moving slowly, but still, whenever the potential is there, we must move forward. And public private partnerships become very, very relevant there. I have picked out some best practices, what we are doing as a UN system. We are focusing, for instance, renewable-based off-grid, mini-grid options in Zambia. We are focusing on technology demonstration there. We are talking about agro-processing industries of Tanzania. 
We are trying to reduce carbon footprint by focusing on water efficiency and resource efficiency. We are also looking in Tanzania using production of bio, biogas from sisal waste. We believe this is very important, how to integrate bioenergy, waste recycling, and productive use. That's how we feel resource-efficient pathways can be found, and the challenge is to scale up such examples. In Kenya, we are setting up more than 30 what we call smart microgrid. Why we're saying smart microgrid? We feel it is not only to produce electricity smartly from various re renewable sources, but also then use it smartly, depending on the load factor and depending on the systems we are looking at. And we believe in Unido that simply producing energy for access is not sufficient. It must be energy for productive activities. Because unless the income levels of local populations increase, they cannot pay back for the services they get. And unless they pay back for the services, then the, these systems cannot be sustainable. This is a very good example. In South Africa, we are focusing on energy management systems, introducing ISO 50001. Junido is perhaps the only agency within UN system, along with multilateral banks and regional banks, focusing on energy management systems and standards for large industries, as well as for SMEs, small and medium scale enterprises. On capacity building, while working in Africa, one thing you always come to know that while large countries like South Africa and others can take care of itself, but when we really go into the smaller countries, like His Excellency mentioned, Africa is very diverse. Local capacity is the first thing we must do, because even if we provide funding, technology, and systems, unless local capacity is there to absorb it, and local policy framework is in place, markets cannot move in. And we believe, and we are very happy that we partnered with ECOWAS Commission to set up ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency in Cape Verde. And my uh, colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Kapiha will be uh, giving you more details about this center. It has become such a powerful uh, and good practice model. Now we have received requests from East African community as well as from Sardar country to set up similar center there in those regions. And of course, surprisingly, we also received a request from some of the East European and Central Asian countries after they heard about a good example. We have 15, 20 countries coming together to really build their capacities on policy framework, regulatory framework, and coming up with those training facilities which otherwise were missing in those regions. We are setting up a very important public-private partnership in Nigeria. It is with Start Oil, and this will be once successful. I think it will open up new avenues and opportunities in various parts of Africa. And here we want to use flared gases, capture flared gases into methanol, and then using a value chain approach, not only for power sector, but also industrial value chain. Here, two slides on sustainable energy for all. These three goals we discussed yesterday in one of the sessions, and I believe all these three goals are very, very relevant for Africa as a continent when we talk about resource-efficient pathways. Universal access to everyone is a must and prerequisite for any other economic development. Of course, it must be coupled with energy efficiency and promotion of renewable energy technologies, where I think Africa has abundant of those technologies. Uh, as of now, out of 65 countries, I must report, since I am working directly under our Director General, Dr. Yum Kela, who chairs Sustainable Energy for All initiative at the global level on, and on behalf of Secretary General of the United Nations, 26 countries have opted in. As a UN system, together with other partners, we are working on rapid assessment and gap analysis. And of course, by next June, this will decide to move forward, how we can really come up with an action plan, a roadmap for really achieving universal access to all in these countries. Let me close by giving you, sharing some few thoughts, few suggestions from my side. We believe in Junido that unless we achieve access to reliable, affordable, and sustainable energy, we cannot have resource efficient pathways in Africa. That's a must, that's the first step. Second, we must promote regional and sub-regional cooperation policies for achieving economies of scale. And some speaker mentioned yesterday in some of the sessions, economies of replication. It's time to move from one or two projects here and there to flagship programs of 100 mini grids, thousands of, or millions of cook stoves. I and mean, we should talk about scale now in Africa. We should not be talking about one megawatt, two megawatt. We should be talking about 100 megawatt of solar parks there. We should be having very clearly, and I think so moderator also mentioned, that Africa should move from exports as a being hub for export of minerals and raw material to value-added products. It should become future manufacturing hub, like Asia has become, because that's the future. And that's where we really help. We must assist African countries, and some are already moving very fast, to really moving towards becoming a manufacturing hub. 
And lastly, not the least, I feel this is very important that what lessons we have learned from other parts of the world, we must take integrated systems approach linking energy, water, food security, and other issues. Because unless we take them together, we may miss out, we may have energy, but then we are missing out on environment. If we're missing out on environment, we are missing out on food security. So it's very important that we try to link them together at this stage so that Africa as a whole can really move towards sustainable development pathways and meet its uh, obligations and vision by 2030, of course, on a very resource-efficient development path. Thank you very much for your kind attention.